Hi, I'm Trevor from astrobackyard.com. In this video, I'm going to show you four ways that you can photograph the upcoming total lunar eclipse. But before we get into that, let's talk about exactly what's happening during a total lunar eclipse. Basically, it's when the moon is covered by Earth's shadow. So a lunar eclipse happens at least twice a year, but it's the, a total lunar eclipse that puts on a real great show. And these are much more rare. So it, it's going to happen on Sunday, January 20th. <laughs> he likes my mitts. The total lunar eclipse happening on January 20th, 2019 will be observable in the Americas from start to finish. Here in Ontario, Canada, the totality of the lunar eclipse will happen just after midnight. During a total lunar eclipse, the moon is being covered by the shadow of the Earth. The Earth sits between the sun and the moon, casting a shadow, and the totality of the lunar eclipse happens when it's directly in the path of the central umbra shadow of the Earth. This is when the disk is only illuminated through filtered light coming through the atmosphere of the Earth, so it appears red because as sunset and sunrise on the Earth, the sky turns an orangey red, so it's filtering through our atmosphere, turning the moon red. There are several stages to the lunar eclipse. Like I said, the whole thing lasts five hours, but it's that 62 minutes of totality that's the most amazing part. That's a long time to get a great photo of this blood moon, of this red, darkened moon. It's a really eerie and amazing sight. Capturing this event with your camera at any phase is gonna create some amazing and interesting photos of the moon like you've probably never seen it before. The most dramatic, of course, though, is when the moon is in the totality phase. The entire surface is illuminated only from the reflected sunlight from our atmosphere and it turns that blood red color. And the most amazing part about it is that the night sky behind it begins to, the stars pop back out again, and it looks the way it does on a moonless night. And you actually see this red full moon in a sea of stars on what looks to be a moonless night because that bright glow of the moon is no longer there washing out the constellations and the stars. It's an incredible scene. Now that you know when the lunar eclipse is happening, where it's happening, and uh, the best part of it, let's go over some ways that you can photograph it using various equipment from total beginner level all the way to advanced. I normally shoot deep sky images of galaxies and nebulae, so I'm going to be using some of the tools I like to use to capture a real up-close look of the moon and that involve a camera and telescope. But there are many ways you can capture this event, uh, including wide field shots that include the landscape around it, and some really interesting things you can do with camera trackers that I've actually never tried myself on a lunar eclipse. So as long as it's clear on Sunday, I'll be using a new technique to capture this event in an interesting and creative way. You like the new house, buddy? Hey, do you like the new house? Come on, bud. The most basic way to capture a total lunar eclipse is with a point-and-shoot digital camera like this one, or a bridge camera as some people refer to them as. There are several limitations to taking astrophotography images with a camera like this, mainly due to the fact that they do not have interchangeable lenses, they're fixed, and they have limited settings and control over exposure and aperture. The type of shot you can expect to get with this will be kind of a wide angle nightscape that includes hopefully a starry sky and a blood moon uh, along that lunar eclipse path. You could actually make a com composite image of the different stages using this. Just don't expect to see a lot of surface detail at this focal length of the digital camera. The key to a good shot with a point and shoot camera like this is to tap into the manual settings, whatever, however limited they may be. Uh, I remember my first point and shoot digital camera could shoot up to 15 seconds. Adjust the ISO, play with those higher ISO settings, longer exposures, all the night photography basics 
with your point and shoot digital camera. Those are what you're going to need for this lunar eclipse. The next method using this point and shoot camera uses a telescope, not on a tracking mount, just a beginner level telescope like this 8 inch Dobsonian. It's all manual and it's called the eyepiece projection astrophotography method. This is where you point the camera lens through the eyepiece to capture a high magnification look at the moon in any of its phases of the eclipse. The high magnification and focal length of the telescope is going to give you an up close look at the moon. The only problem is it's going to be moving across the field of view at a good rate depending on uh, your magnification. So you'll need to, you're kind of limited there as far as exposure speed because it's going to need to be quite quick to capture a sharp shot. With that being said though, it is possible to get a decent photo of the moon using the eyepiece projection method with a point and shoot camera like this. The next method for capturing a total lunar eclipse is a very powerful one and there's some very amazing images I've seen captured this way and it's just with a DSLR camera and lens on a stationary tripod. Forget about this star tracker right now, just, let's just say this is a regular tripod. A DSLR camera lets you take 20-30 second exposure which is enough to pull in a starry sky and some of the deep sky objects within it if you're using a high enough ISO and of course with that eclipsed moon in the shot as well. So this is a great method if you want to capture the path of the, of the moon as it travels through the phases and you can create a composite image of each phase in, in a line across the sky. Uh, it's a great way to show the landscape around it. It's going to be quite wide, so picture that moon is, is just going to be a, you know, a smaller red disc as opposed to those high magnification views with all the detail that you, you might have seen. But that of course depends on the lens though. This is a, a 17 millimeter, so it'll be quite wide, which means that moon's going to be rather small. After that though, you can get a star tracker like this Ioptron Sky Tracker, which compensates for the rotation of the Earth. and you can forget about star trails or blurry images after 30 seconds. So picture shooting uh, a one or two minute exposure that pulls in a lot of light, starlight and deep sky objects and star clusters along with that eclipsed moon. So it just gives you more options. Also, if your lens is a higher focal length and you're zoomed in a little bit on the moon, a star tracker is gonna let you take a sharp shot because it's moving with the moon over a long exposure. So that opens the door to two to five second exposures at a higher focal length of the moon. Whereas if you try that on a stationary tripod without the star tracker, it would just show the, the short blur of the moon moving. Here's where it really gets interesting. So this is an astronomical telescope on a German equatorial tracking mount. Like the star tracker I mentioned earlier, this is polar aligned, so it compensates for the rotation of the Earth and this is used normally for deep sky astrophotography when you're taking really long exposures and it's important for your object not to move while you're taking a really long exposure image. This is great for capturing high magnification close-ups of the eclipse moon. So you have that full control that you get from a DSLR camera with it attached using a T-ring and adapter aligned with the focal plane of the telescope and so whatever the native focal length of the telescope is, that's going to be your view. So this one happens to be in about the 700 millimeter range. And that's going to be the fixed view that we have of the moon, which is a nice high magnification view. Then I can control how much light I pull in on the camera sensor by adjusting the ISO settings and the exposure length on the camera. <sighs> All right, here we go. I am in Adobe Photoshop right now looking at a photo of the total lunar eclipse I captured in 2015. Now this is using the prime focus astrophotography method using a DSLR camera and telescope. So the camera was a Canon EOS 70D and it's a stock camera and it was taken through an 80 millimeter refractor telescope. As you can see, a really dramatic, awesome image. You get the surface details of the moon in there, the stars behind it. This is a single image frame, not, an ex not a composite. So pretty incredible results using this method. Now, uh, if you wanna see what the raw image files look like, I'll just take you into Bridge. Now these are the images straight from the camera that I, that I captured that night using my DSLR. So here you can see the partial eclipse phase so this is using an exposure that was quite short, 
one uh, eightieth of a second at f5.6 and I should mention that I started out using a telephoto camera lens. This was a 400 millimeter lens before I used the telescope mentioned previously for the last image. So these images are through a 400 millimeter camera lens and uh, the reason I mentioned that it's a short exposure is because it looks like it's just completely gone the rest of the moon here. It's exposed enough to show the bright surface details and nothing else. As you start to take a longer exposure, so this one is 1 15th of a, of a second at ISO 800, you can start to see some of the surface details of the moon and then the blown out highlights of where it's still being illuminated by the sun. Pretty amazing to uh, watch it um, in real time and actually transition through the phases. So as the night went on, I started experimenting with different uh, settings and exposures and of course the, the transition of the eclipse was taking place. Uh, in this shot here is where you can start to see it's getting closer to totality where you see the orange moon and uh, that's that cutout of bright illuminated moon is becoming smaller and smaller. So this is kind of a neat phase to capture the lunar eclipse in uh, and if you're making a composite photo of a series of images through each phase uh, you'll want to capture this is a great one great example of the of the partial eclipse before totality sets in moving on here we can see as there's not much left here where it's actually being um, not in the umbral shadow the primary direct shadow of the earth and a little bit farther on so this is about the last one I took through the camera lens. I wanted to get in a little bit deeper, so I switched to a telescope, but you can see we're almost in the to totality phase of the total lunar eclipse. And now these ones are through the telescope uh, during totality and my favorite shots. Some of these have some quick adjustments applied in uh, Adobe Camera Raw, but they are single exposures using some interesting settings here. This one's 2.5 seconds at ISO 800. And uh, I found that actually shooting longer in this scenario using a lower ISO produced some pretty great images. So this one's 13 seconds long at ISO 800. And then just for fun, I pushed the limits. I did a 30 second exposure of the, uh, the total lunar eclipse and it just it began to clip some of the highlights. So I, I dialed it back a bit to 15 seconds at ISO 100. So the benefits of shooting at a lower ISO are of course uh, lower digital noise in your image. And uh, so I'll just look at, um, I'll show you how I process this image. A lot of fun to process. So this has the, uh, the settings I've already applied in Adobe Camera Raw here, but I'll set it back to normal by clicking Camera Raw Defaults. So this is what it looks like straight out of the camera. And then using Adobe Camera Raw in Photoshop here, I can make some really powerful adjustments. So the over, bumping up the overall exposure and turning the highlights down. So all that data, that detail, surface detail is in there, but uh, it just needs to be adjusted. So you can see in the histogram here that I haven't clipped any darks or highlights. It's just a matter of balancing things out to get that high dynamic range that we all love so much. So uh, I usually do things like uh, boost the saturation and vibrance to uh, really bring out that color. We can do some sharpening in here. Um, this one was shot at ISO 100, so there's not a lot of noise, but you could do some noise reduction. Uh, I would probably mask the moon, so uh, the moon gets sharpened, but that background sky doesn't. And uh, yeah, so this is pretty close to what the final image ended up looking like, uh, using those quick adjustments there. Uh, as you can see, I did a lot more sharpening, and I, I cropped it in quite a bit for uh, this final image. Um, at, just for comparison, uh, here's a, a bright full moon. Uh, this is a composite image with a shorter exposure to expose the surface details with that bright glow of the moon around it blended together. Uh, of just a well exposed full moon shot right here on a typical full moon night. And then this is uh, an example of a shot captured using a DSLR camera on a stationary tripod. Uh, this is the inset image here is zoomed in uh, at the 200 millimeter focal length of a zoom lens and then the wide angle at 18 millimeters here of the eclipse moon in the 
Dawn Sky. This one was uh, October 2014. So really exciting coming up. I hope you get to capture images in uh, whichever way uh, you want to and based on the gear you have. Um, but if you do take a uh, prime focus astrophotography shot like this, maybe this provided some inspiration to you uh, or capturing it in the partial lunar eclipse phase. Really cool stuff. I realized that this was a very high level overview of how to photograph a celestial event like a total lunar eclipse. But no matter which way you choose to enjoy the event, even if it's just observing it with a pair of binoculars or with the naked eye, it truly is a remarkable and relatively rare astronomy event that everyone can appreciate. So I hope you're able to get out and enjoy it and uh, photograph the event no matter what kind of gear you're using and what your experience level. And uh, if you enjoy this kind of thing, the astrophotography, please subscribe to the Astro Backyard YouTube channel and uh, I look forward to seeing you again next time. Clear skies.